All right. Hello, everyone. I'm Max Vincent, member of the content team here for the NCDA. And with me, I have Evan Brown, captain for Bowling Green State University. And Evan, I'm actually, I brought you here to, I told you, interview you about kind of the end of the semester, kind of how BG was, what I've got you here for. It's to announce that you are November's baller of the month. Wow. I'm honestly honored. That's I've wanted this since uh, I saw it first come out, and it's honestly an honor that you guys would vote me. Absolutely. That. And you're, I mean, you've proven yourself to be the focal point of the Bowling Green team, both on and off the court. And just the way that you lead the team and come, you noble know, comebacks against Ohio State, you know, you, maybe it didn't go your way at the end, but you've proven yourself to be the number one problem on the, on the court for the Falcons. And for that, congratulations. So I'm, I'm honored to be a part of that list. Kudos to you. So Let's just start with in the interview part portion. What made you choose BG? Um, like to go there, just to go there. Yeah, yeah. Just in general, like, what are you studying? Um, kind of how how far along in school are you? Um, I decided to go there. Honestly, uh, I like the campus. It was really beautiful, and it was like I I'm from Defiance. I don't know if anyone knows where that is, but that's not um too far from BG. So, but it was far enough to where I could establish my own life and uh yeah I'm I'm currently I just got done with my first semester sophomore year so yeah um I decided to go in the uh tourism field it's not really well known but I didn't know we had a tourism major I didn't either until <laughs> uh I came in undecided and then one of the professors recommended it and uh I just ran with it and I liked it so yeah well, that's good. So in kind of establishing yourself, you found the dodgeball club. So walk me through that. What, what made you join? I'm not going to lie. I like uh, how we always have campus fest. I didn't even show up to that. I didn't even know about that. Um, Actually, one of my teammates on the team, uh, Logan Gerardo, he he kept bragging about these cool jerseys. So I had to go check it out. And uh, I went and I'm not going to lie. I didn't take it serious at first. But when uh when you had a guy slinging them at your face pretty hard, you had to take it pretty serious, like Cole Wilson and Gabe oh, yeah. Carrington. So that made me uh, pretty competitive and made me want to play. Yeah. So kind of speaking on that, have you kind of molded yourself to be like any of the older players? Where, where have you kind of – who have you learned from? I would definitely say I've taken the most from Cole just because he obviously is always – he's always texting me. He's always offering me help. Um He's always trying to help me finally learn how to catch the ball, you know, but um, yeah, definitely Cole. He's always there to help me out. I mean, and, you guys were, because we're near identical on the court all last year. Yeah, pretty much. I, I always told him, I said, if you're going to be up in the danger zone, I want to be with you. You know, I want to do what you're doing. And I mean, so, it, it, it goes further. I mean, you, you both are hat guys on the court, which is pretty rare for the league. Well, the only reason I do it's because I can't ever get my hair to look good, but I don't know what his reason was. So now that you've been in the league for a season and a half, have you developed any kind of rivals, any players that you like going against? Um, I always like going against OU, and I like playing against Caleb Arnold for sure. He's always tough. Um, Terrence is always tough too on OU. That whole team's very good. Um, but um, rivalry, um, I would say definitely Akron as a rivalry. Um, since he's kind of becoming one after the OT, and I definitely say OSU is definitely right up there as well after so, the last game we played. Yeah, so almost the entire entire Ohio region. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, we've got ODC coming up in the start of the next semester. What are you guys seeing? You guys haven't been able to topple Akron yet this season. It's kind of had your number. How's the how's the team looking? How are you guys progressing and getting ready for what's going to be a tough Ohio battle? Well, we're just really – I think the biggest thing that you look back at all the good BG clubs they could catch, and we're really working on that, and we're working on our transition game because if you look at uh, all the better teams in the NCDA, they have a great transition game. Mm-hmm. So we're still working on that, and um, really, we just got to stop. I think our biggest problem, too, is just throwing stupid catches that we know better. So that's what we're really working on. We're working on not being too aggressive. We're yeah. just trying to play some smart dodgeball and uh, catch the dang thing. Mm -hmm. 
And I mean, and it, and it goes to show you guys are still a super young team. I mean, you're a captain, you're a sophomore. Mm-hmm. So how have you kind of, how's recruiting gone and kind of developing your, your rookie class going? Um, it's going really well. Um, from first day to, to now, it's obviously tremendous leaps. I mean, we've had some really solid rookie play from Dalton mm-hmm. and we've had some great play from uh, AJ. Both have played really well and there's only more coming up. I think that throughout this year, they're only just going to continue to strive. And as long as they keep staying dedicated to the sport and taking care of themselves, I know Dalton hurt his finger. Yeah. Yeah. So as long as we can keep them healthy Mm -hmm. and just keep focusing on, on the little minor details of the sport, they'll, I think uh, we could do great things in this league for years to come. Sure. So kind of taking that, go a little further kind of league wise, what have you kind of seen in the league this year? Any surprises, anything caught you off guard? Um, or any notable teams that you didn't really see coming? Oh, for sure. Akron last tournament was, they were very good. They had, I don't, I don't know who he was, but they had this dude that was thrown really hard and uh, him and uh, PJ, he, he's insane. So, and then you got, Clay out there can catch two balls at once. So really, they really surprised me. Um, but yeah, I would say they've been the biggest surpriser this year so far by far. Oh, and UWP. I can't deny that. They've come a long way since last year. Oh, yeah. They're definitely shaping up to be very, very good. Oh, yeah. So kind of, and let's go back to kind of BG specific. So we all know there is the BG pre-match ritual. Can you describe that for me? Well, obviously we get, uh, as the people can hear, we we get in a big circle. We have our captain, Easton Huffman. He talks to us. So I've done it once, but I'd say he's better at it for sure. And he just hypes us up. He gets us ready to go, tells us what we need to do. He says to the right, we move back and forth. It definitely hypes everybody up for sure. Going into this next semester, Who's going to take it all at nationals? Well, I'm not going to be biased and just say BG, but I don't blame if, you for saying that. Yeah. You, I mean, you have to take your team, right? But if we're not going off face that, um, I would definitely say if OU can play smartly together consistently, they have the most talented roster. I can, I think mm-hmm. that team is pretty good. And like the only team that can hurt themselves is them. I mean, they're the only ones in their own way. It's just when they get aggressive and throw up a million balls at you and then they lose ball control and then they screw themselves. So honestly, I think, I think it's theirs for the taking if we're not including BG. I mean, and we're just going to jump by Michigan state on that. So, I mean, they've, they've proven they they're, they're legit. Oh yeah, they definitely are. I haven't been able to see them play though. Okay. That's fair. i I've seen uh obviously they've they did really well against G V. Mm-hmm. That was yeah. impressive. Yeah, no no disrespect towards Michigan State. I just haven't seen them play, but mm-hmm. I bet if I did see them play, I'd put them right there. Obviously, if they're doing that to G V, that's a very rare thing to happen. So elite team, I'd say, too. For sure. So kind of some less serious questions now that we've kind of gotten the business end out of the way. Number six, any reason behind it? I feel like I'm going to get a lot of backlash for this. I'm a, I'm a Browns fan. Oh. Old, old Baker. That's what it was for. And I just decided I should stick with it after the mm-hmm. rookie year, but he really let me down. I'll tell you. So that's, Hey, you can always be a Bengals fan. Oh, I wish I love I having love a Joe Burrow. Love that franchise quarterback. Oh, he's awesome. But um, next year I'm actually taking or when once we get our new jerseys, I'm actually gonna take number zero for from Cole. Oh, yeah, he was like he said, "It's all yours, man. If you want it, I'll un- that's cool. I'll let you wear it." So, yeah, that was a big moment mm-hmm. for for him to say that. And so, yeah, I'm gonna try and continue the Cole Wilson legacy on the BG court once we get those new jerseys in. We we'll have to get you some pineapple shorts too. You've had a lot of nicknames, I've heard. Yes, from either the team or league wise. 
so I, I've heard Evcat. I, I mean, I've met you as Avonsky. Mm -hmm. What's been your favorite? Can I put one that's off the court? That's just with the. Give me that one. Okay, so. Um, my favorite, I would definitely have to say, is Beanbag. Beanbag. I've been called Beanbag. Uh, but what's, probably... Is there a story behind Beanbag? Um, so when you you know how you make your March Madness brackets and you have yeah. to make a name. I tried thinking of something funny and I put Bean Tween as the name. And one of the guys thought it was hilarious. So he called me Ev Bean. Um a bunch of stuff just with bean in it. <laughs> And then um, we were, I was playing FIFA with one of my friends and he goes, yo, beanbag. And then it's just stuck, I guess. So you're, you're beanbag now. In the Offenhauer dorms, that's me, beanbag. Nice. Yeah. So Great do you have, day. so, I mean, we're, we're at the end of the interview now. Do you have anything else you want to add or anything else we might have missed? Do you want to kind of call your shot here in the next semester? Um, I would like to give thanks to all my teammates. I mean, obviously you can't be in this situation without them. We have phenomenal catchers and, uh, Josh Boyers and Logan and Gerardo. When I get a little too aggressive and leave myself open in the front line that can help me get open or get me back in the games. Um, we have, uh, we have great rookies. Like I told you, Dalton and AJ, um, we have some of the best throwers, uh, Evan Manyard, uh, Cayman Klein. And then you, we have a very smart strategic player and Riley Brady. I mean, I could go on and on about these guys. I know uh, we might not be playing as well as we would like to the first semester, but I look back and I think a couple tournaments, one thing goes this way and we go two and one on the day instead of one and two. So I, yeah, I would just honestly like to give a shout out to my teammates and, I'm honestly just blessed that you guys would consider me like you shocked me. Definitely. <laughs> for sure. You definitely. Good. Me. That was the goal. But seriously, congratulations on winning baller of the month. You're the first BG baller of the month in a while. And you are one of the premier players that, has, that have come through our program. And so thank you. So thank you. Thank you for the interview and thank you all for watching.